Hey up, I'm Heidi and I live on a narrowboat and I've lived on a narrowboat now for 10 years and I thought I'd do a series of vlogs because I've got loads of friends that say to me, Heidi, what's it like being a girl on a boat? Well, I'm going to show you. So everything from cruising the boat, doing the locks, maintaining the boats, just general boaty stuff. Now I'm currently in my boatsman's cabin and the boatsman's cabin is a little room that separates the place from where I stand to drive and my engine. Now the room is fantastic little room, we've got loads and loads of storage and this comes down into a big wide double bed so it's a great little space. I just want to tell you a little bit about my boat. My boat is what's called a Coalcraft Tug and it was built around 2008 so it's not an old boat. However, the engine is old. The engine was built around the early 1960s and it's a Lister HR2. It's older than the boat and it's older than me. But most boats aren't like this. Most boats, at the back of the boat, you're standing to drive the boat on top of your own engine. But mine's quite about nine foot away from where I stand to drive. So because of that, my controls are quite different. So I'm going to show you now how the controls work. So I'm now at the back of the boat and this is my speed wheel. This controls the throttle. And as you can see, it goes all the way down my boatman's cabin. This one on the right is my gears. So the throttle's on the left and the gears are on the right. So as we now go down into the engine room, as I turn that brass speed wheel at the rear of the boat, that controls this now in the engine room, this piece of string, which then in turn tightens and opens the throttle up down on the engine. These are my gears, that's forward, that's neutral, and then this one's reverse. So now from the back of the boat, we'll see how it goes. So now I'm going to go into forward gear and put the revs on. That gets me going. Suddenly I see a bridge hole and I have to slow right down, put it into neutral and then put it into reverse. Put the revs on before I even start to slow down. So it's quite a palaver whilst I'm trying to steer the boat at the same time. So I've made it down the Pennines, down the Rochdale, through Manchester and currently at Barnton. And I want to get to Anderton so I can meet up with my family and sort a few boat jobs out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to head from Barnton to Anderton. Now there's been a landslide, so the canal has been shut for quite a few months and they've just recently reopened it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through there, get to Anderton and then I can use the services there such as filling up with water. So come with me. As soon as I got to water point, oh my goodness did the ovens open, it was absolutely horrendous. I went inside and put the kettle on, but oh I was drenched, absolutely drenched. It was like hailstone in really strong winds, I was wetter than a mermaid's foof. Absolutely horrendous. But I did manage to get my bins emptied, get the water all filled up and empty my toilets. So all the good things that I can do, but I mean look at the puddles here. It was just absolutely horrible. But at least I was moored up and I could run in when it happened and I wasn't actually cruising. It's always a positive. 
So now all my tanks were nice and full, it was time to go and moor up and the moorings are behind me. So first thing you had to do was reverse and then turn in this marina entrance. So don't forget, I've got my weird controls, so it takes a bit of time. So I'm going to speed this up for you. So there's always lots of jobs to do on a narrowboat. There's always some work to do. And you never ever get it fully finished unless you buy a brand spanking new one. And I haven't got the money to do that. As you can see from my narrow boat, she has what's called a tug deck, which is a really, really long front. A lot of boats have it open, but I've had mine enclosed because it gives me a lot more space and the inside's all been insulated, so it's a proper room. But it was only finished off in two pack and I never got a chance to get a top coat on it. So my job today was to get this painted in a top coat because I've already done the other side when the boat was moored on the towpath on that side. But since then the towpath's always been on the wrong side. So now's the chance to get it all sorted. The first thing I'm going to do is get it all sanded. I know my mum called in for a brew. So I ended up getting her doing a little bit of help as well whilst I went and put kettle on. <laughs> Once we sanded it, it was time to brush it off and give it a good turps, just to clean off all the residue. Now let me just warn you here, I am not a painter, I'm not telling you this is a right or a wrong way to do things, this is just the way that I've done it. I found some dodgy old undercoat under my well deck, it had been there for years and years. Anyway, after a good shake and a good stir, it was fine. <laughs> 